to in our newspaper. Um, initiative 1501, the union spent, uh, last I checked it was 1.4 million, it might be more. Uh, they're the, they were the sole donors, SEIU was the only person contributing to this, and uh, they got a clever ballot title, uh, and it looks like it is to protect um, identity theft for seniors and to protect the vulnerable. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Uh, the only thing that it does uh, in that regard is people who have uh, already committed those crimes get a stiffer punishment. The real point of the initiative, that has nothing to do with the point of the initiative, the entire existence of this initiative was to stop the Freedom Foundation from being able to get access to public records and contacting home health care providers about their constitutional rights. And so we filed public records requests. Uh, again, you can go out and like, uh, you can go check the Secretary of Websites page and pull up the voter rolls. You can find somebody's address, their birth date, and the last time they voted. This is all a public record. People sometimes when they find out about it get mad, but these are public records. Anyone can go and access this information. Um, what we were asking for was less than that. And again, it's a public record. It's been a public record that's been filled before uh, when other people have asked for it. We asked for it, and the union immediately filed uh, a lawsuit. Uh, asked for an emergency restraining order, uh, made all kinds of false allegations, was granted the restraining order because the courts are very liberal with restraining orders for good reason. Uh, if you act, go in and you say you need a restraining order for safety reasons, they're going to give you the restraining order, uh, a temporary one, until you can get into court a few days later to tell them you know, what's going on. So they're always going to grant that, so they grant it. Um, and it became an ongoing battle where uh, it took us two years, and in that two-year process, uh, they went to the legislature and tried to get a bill passed to make the public records exempt so that we couldn't get access to them. They publicly stated that we had the legal right to them under the public records laws while they're in court arguing that we don't and we shouldn't have them. Um, but all, the whole time they knew that. In Oregon, in fact, we, we uh, lost in the legislature because the unions have so much influence down there and have spent so much money and have so much control, we filed a public records request, they went into the legislature, lobbied the legislature, passed a bill and said that the records are no longer allowed before, the, before they fulfilled our records request. They said, ah, the law was just changed. Um, so they failed to beat us in court in uh, nine different uh, hearings, uh, all the way up to this, they appealed all the way to the Supreme Court, <clears throat> knowing the whole time that they had no chance of winning, they were just stalling. Uh, in that time, they were sending out all kinds of information about the Freedom Foundation to their members, saying that we were trying to uh, make them lose their health care, trying that we were fighting against their wage increases. They said all sorts of horrible things um, that were absolutely not true. In fact, our attorneys, if they didn't have better things to do and weren't filing other lawsuits, would have filed a lawsuit against the union uh, for making all of these false claims. In fact, I think that they were looking at something along those lines again because they're sending things out to their members regularly saying the Freedom Foundation is trying to take away your health care, trying to do this. So now when we go to the door and go to talk to them and we say we're from the Freedom Foundation, they're like, get off my porch, you know, shut the door before we can even tell them anything. We can't say a word to them because they've been inoculated. Uh, and that was what they were trying to do in that stall tactic time. They knew they couldn't win. Um, and the other thing they were doing is preparing this initiative. They said, well, we can't win in the courts, we can't win in the legislature, we'll just fool the people. Uh, we'll just get an initiative, put it on the ballot, tell them it's to protect the elderly and the vulnerable, and everyone will vote for it. And they pulled it, it was pulling in the mid-70s. Uh, of course, who would not vote for that? Republican, Democrat, Independent, everybody thinks that's great. Uh, again, when you look at it, what it does is it amends our public record laws to exempt a specific target segment of the public employees that fall under the United States Supreme Court decision Harris v. Quinn. Those are the only people being exempted are the people who fall under this United States Supreme Court decision that have these new constitutional rights and don't know they have them. And the union isn't telling them they have them. The state isn't telling them they have them. And we're trying to reach out and tell them that they have them. So this is one initiative that we are asking everyone to vote no on. Most of the newspapers have come out saying to vote no on it. Uh, shockingly, the other day, the stranger, who is certainly not a fan of ours, uh, wrote uh, an article saying that they were absolutely against it. They said horrible things about us as well, but uh, in the meantime, they, they agreed that it was a terrible initiative, even though they can't stand us. Um, so they said, all right, you know, that's fine. There's bipartisanship. You know, no, everyone thinks this is a bad initiative. Um, I'll, 
in fact, there's a whole bunch of different uh, newspapers that have come out against it. I can hand these out, uh, or 